Good morning and welcome to the house of God. For those of you who are watching online and have a prayer book, we begin our service on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desire is known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for reading the lessons. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the tre treasures of darkness and riches hidden in the secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read responsively by whole verse, Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But it is the Lord who made the heavens. 
Oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence. Oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of his peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes, when he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father and to and the Son and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will, and will be, be forever. forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved in God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you, not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we proved you to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turn to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us, then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Okay, you may be seated, and let's get the kids up here. I come armed. Sanitizer and a quarter. Come on up. I don't bite. <laughs> they don't have that's okay they don't have to
Okay, I'm going to keep my distance, but I've got a question. Who knows who George Washington was? Who was he? First president, right. Now, do you know what he looks like? What he looked like? He had black hair, okay. And was his hair kind of strange? Kind of looked almost like mine? Well, <laughs> it looked better than mine, but that's okay. He is dead now. Um, so, how do you know what he looks like? From the descriptions, have you ever seen anything that would show him, show your face, his face to you? So, do you know what, where you might have seen it? Hmm? In a miracle. Oh, in a book. I thought, that's a good story. Um, one of the ways that we know what he looks like, come on up, one of the ways we know that what he looks like is that his face is imprinted on every quarter, every 25 cent piece. So I'm going to pass this around, but then I'm going to use this, but I want everybody to look at what he actually looked like and see if you can distinguish some features about him that are unique to George Washington. I mean, was he, did he have a round face? Did he have a big nose? Did he have, was he smiling? So just pass it around and I'll give everybody their, their um, squirt in a minute. So when you see a coin in any realm over many, many years, over forever maybe, a coin has an impression of somebody's face in it, always. And so you, the question is, how do you know what people look like if you don't have something in front of them? The bigger question is, how do you know what God looks like? Do you have any idea what God looks like? Yeah, it's kind of hard to know. Here's a secret. He looks like you, and 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 you, and you, and me, and everybody here. Because God put himself, a piece of himself, he put his impression on every one of us, every human being that has ever lived. That is a special, special gift and a special responsibility. So that means when you leave here, in this church or out in the world, when you are out ar around your friends, around your teachers, around your parents, you carry a piece of God in your very person, and he wants that to shine through. So let's pray about that. Dear God, we thank you so much that you loved us so much to put yourself, a part of yourself, in each of us. And we thank you, Lord, that we carry your image as a privilege into the world around us. Help us to show your face through our kindness, gentleness, and love. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, nobody leaves without a squirt. Here we go, rub, rub, rub. There you go. And off you go to, whoop. There you go. <laughs> this is going in the plate, by the way. <laughs> Head on out, girls and boys. Thank you. Pray with me, please. Father God, we ask for your spirit to empower our time together, to soften our hearts, and to woo us into a deeper and further love and service of you. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, Jesus is really in a pickle now. At least that's what his accusers are hoping. As today's gospel opens, Jesus is at the temple in the last week of his life. And it's been a long week, 
and it's only Tuesday. He has upended the tables of the money changers and driven the dealers from the temple courtyard. The Pharisees and elders have repeatedly tested him on various religious issues to no avail, and the Jewish powers that be are becoming more and more aggressive and fearful of Jesus' influence. So the Pharisees have now, in today's gospel, ratcheted up the pressure by forming an unlikely alignment with the Herodians, setting another trap for Jesus, this time over the issue of paying taxes to Caesar. These are particularly strange bedfellows, the Pharisees and the Herodians, for the two groups despised each other. They had very different relationships with Caesar and thus with the payment of taxes to and the authority of a secular go uh, government. In ancient times, coinage was the sign of kingship. As soon as a ruler came into power, he struck his own image, uh, he struck his own coin, coinage with his own image and a, a declaration and an inscription of his own divinity. Any and all coins bearing the king's likeness were held to be the exclusive property of that king. For most Jews, and the Pharisees in particular, the payment of taxes to any earthly king was to accept that king as valid and thus was seen as an insulting diminishment of God's authority and divinity. The Herodians, on the other hand, were the party of Herod, the puppet governor who owed his power to Caesar's occupying Roman governance. The Herodians needed Roman authority to maintain their own authority and taxes were surely an important means for preservation of that power. Most Jews, especially the Pharisaic Jews, saw Herodians as traitors or even heretics. So it speaks volumes that these two groups formed an alliance. Their collective determination to maintain power and fearful hatred of Jesus and his ascendancy with the people eclipsed even their abhorrence of each other. So the Pharisees' oily opening flattery of Jesus, teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, blah, 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 was their setup to entice Jesus to respond to a test which they felt sure he would finally, he would finally discredit himself with his own words in the presence of the people overhearing the exchange. If Jesus said it was unlawful to pay Caesar's tax, they would immediately report him to the Roman officials and he would promptly be arrested for sedition. If he said it was lawful to pay the tax, he would stand discredited in the eyes of the people who despised and resented Roman authority and occupation in their country. And when his accusers asked their question, is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not, they carefully worded it so that as to offer Jesus only a lose-lose, yes or no option. All in all, these guys were feeling pretty sure they had finally, were finally about to, well, nail Jesus. Sorry, I had to do it. But Jesus' stunning response takes into account the web of hot-button issues before him. Essentially, he simply says, give back to the emperor what's already his, but give to God what is his. Give back to the emperor what is already his and give to God what belongs to God. Of course, Jesus' response was clever and blew right through their trick question even if he had said and done nothing else or implied anything else in that um, response, it would have been revelatory, given the predominant view at the time that Jews should reject any secular power. So the first thing Jesus does here is to actually pronounce a new element of salvation history by expanding the ways and the places that God's people are to function in a secular world beyond the parameters of a strictly religious life. They should, we should, pay to Caesar what is deemed Caesar's. We should be good and responsible citizens of the secular state. That alone would have gotten their attention. 
Christ's response is revelatory, yes, but it is also loaded, loaded with meaning, loaded with biblical references, loaded with his own implied question for us as much as it was to any first century Jew. For in answering his accuser's question, Jesus uses a specific word, icon, translated in today's reading as head, but more often and literally translated as likeness, resemblance, or image. Jesus is asking his challengers and the group surrounding, in whose image is this made? In whose image is this made? Does that ring a bell with anyone? Because it certainly would have with those Jews around him. His listeners would have heard God's declaration at the very beginning of all time and space in the very first chapter of the very first book of the Bible, just at the moment he's about to create human beings from the dust of the earth. Let us make humankind in our image, after our likeness, God says. And in the next verse, he underscores his decision. God created humankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Christ turns his accuser's ploy into a broad reminder of how uniquely precious we are and in whom our human loyalty and ultimate purpose lies. In creating everything else in the universe out of nothing, and declaring it good, it was only when God created humans in his very own image, engraving each person with some irreplaceable sacred part of himself, that God declared his work was very good. Beloved, we are precious guardians and dispensers of God's image in the world around us. We were created for that very purpose. I can imagine our creator, eyes wide with delight, smiling, bent over some lump of clay, his strong, gentle hands shaping, caressing, molding us into existence as he places some special part of himself into every unique human soul. We are God's beloved treasure and the pinnacle of his creation. What personal tenderness and individual care he pours out to us, one by one, by one, by one. And here's the thing. Knowing that every one of us is created by God Almighty in his own likeness, knowing that God somehow engraved himself into us, makes all the difference in what it means to be human. It makes all the difference in how we see and treat each other, inside and outside of this church. It makes all the difference in how we define what it is to be a civilized culture and a healthy community. In a few minutes, we're gonna dedicate a beautiful new baptismal font given by Katie Jukic to Good Shepherd in memory of her parents, who were one of Good Shepherd's earliest first three families. As I count it, that would make five generations of Katie's family in this church, making, covering, marking about 100 years. Five granddaughters and nine great-grandchildren have been baptized in this community, the family Christ has planted at the Church of the Good Shepherd. At the moment of each of their baptisms, like every Christian, those five generations were sealed and marked as Christ's own forever. By God's amazing provision, we are literally, as the old song goes, signed, sealed, and delivered through Christ in God's imprinted love and mercy. Knowing that every human creature is created by God in God's own image means, proves, that every life is, in God's reckoning, precious and sacred. This is especially true of the truly defenseless, the unborn, the physically or mentally handicapped, the aged, the, the list goes on. Every soul, every person is not only valid but treasured by God. And there's a lesson we need to learn and, and honor in that. 
It's a special responsibility. And amazingly, this is the third aspect of this, amazingly, as in no other country that I know in the history of the world, only our nation was founded on this same divine truth. It is precisely what American exceptionalism is all about. For when people speak of American exceptionalism, they are not promoting some platitude of national pride or superiority, but really something quite the reverse. Our founders, flawed men that they might have been, designed this nation around the exceptional idea that all people are created in God's divine likeness, bearing within themselves his divine spark. We are therefore, if for no other reason than that, precious and worthy as individual souls with individual thoughts, capacities, and goals. Our founding fathers admired and affirmed, unlike any other government in the world the world has ever known, that all people are created equal and that each is given by God, not by any government, certain absolute unassailable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and all the corollary, corollary benefits that arise from that. Ours is the only nation founded not on prohibitions or restrictions in, imposed by some earthly power, but on the truth of our freedom as children under God's authority and directive, and that as such, we can be counted on to discern and follow our divine creator's will and greater purpose for a country formed under his holy stamp and guidance. We have certainly not always lived up to these ideals. And like all sin-tarnished humans, we often place our own interests above those ideals and Unlike any, but unlike any nation in the history of the world, to my knowledge, the United States was founded on the belief that every person bears the image of God and is therefore worthy of equal opportunity and the pursuit of his and her own dreams. Having said that, the timing of this specific reading less than three weeks before what is surely one of the most contentious and ugly elections of our history is well challenging. And 2020 has been a long, unnerving, often tragic year in many ways in so many lives. Hearts and lives have been rattled and broken. We surely would be wise to recognize that we really are in a battle not only of mortals and human events, but against spiritual forces. I pray that each of you will test and decide your own vote, mindful of God's affirming principles. That will never lead you wrong. As faithful Christians, we have every reason for hope, though. We have much to be thankful for. We know that God is not surprised or overwhelmed by any of the recent events that have rocked not only this nation, but the entire world. In whatever way our own election is resolved, we are blessed to be in a country designed to conform, designed to conform God's, confirm God's authority at its foundation. The transfer or the sustaining of any elected government here is not the result of blood and brutality, but of ballots, ballots completed freely and in private. God can and will use any person placed in a position of authority, just as he did Pharaoh, the Pharaoh of Egypt and the brutal Cyrus we read about who did not know God. Our God is in charge and he will not be mocked or dismissed. The one who made us and marked us, every human as his own creation, sees and knows and loves, and he is at work in these turbulent times. We simply are called to turn to him with repentant hearts and faithfully, humbly, daily, follow the cross-bearing call of our Lord Jesus as his servants and beloved if broken children. And as we respond to this time of, in this time of upheaval and isolation, with his spirit of peace, 
gentleness, kindness, and love. We are sure to see in his good time our faithful creative father bending over this ailing nation and world, gently shaping and caressing many more rough lumps of all sorts and colors and shapes and sizes of clay into his holy, humble, faithful men, will, women, peoples, and nations, bearing God's sovereign holy image and light into a renewed world. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Thanks be to God. Amen. For those of you at home, turn to page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. Please stand with me as we proclaim our faith through the articles of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. For the prayers of the people this morning, for those of you at home, turn to page 387, form 3. Let us pray, kneeling as you are able. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We invite your prayers of intercession or thanksgiving. You are welcome to pray them out loud. We thank you, Lord, for the ministry of um, Tim and Meg in our presence. We ask you to give them a wonderful time of vacation and restoration. And we thank Katie and Melvin and the Jukic family for this wonderful contribution that they're making. We pray for our nation. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness 
to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. For those of you at home, the Book of Common Prayer page is 360 for the confession. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace. Peace. I don't like this, but peace. Peace. <laughs> peace. peace. Elbow coming. Peace, Tim. This is silly, isn't it? But God's peace, Robert. Well, good morning, and it is, it is such a privilege and, and delight for me to be here with you. A um, couple of things. We're going to have a wonderful moment of dedication for the baptismal font in just a minute. But before we get to this really wonderful gift, I want to just sort of fill you in on what's going on. Um, on November 21st, Saturday, November 21st, we have our 14th annual golf tournament. So if you're at all interested in either playing or sponsoring, we have the uh, sheets in the back. Please fill them out and make note of it. Uh, Whitney Sutton continues her seamless class this Wednesday night at 6.15 in the parlor. And if you're a guest, we certainly hope that you'll join us for some refreshments and time afterwards and enjoy the fellowship of this marvelous, wonderful parish. Um, Let's see, Owen oh, Compline will be on Facebook this week, Mon uh, Sunday through Thursday, and Steve Carter's gonna be leading it this week, so in for a real treat, and I hope that we see a, a ministry develop out of that. It's just a wonderful, beautiful service. Um, okay, celebrating birthdays. If, if some are here, I think. Um, if you just stand as I call your name, Rebecca Brandon, Kurt Templeton, Janet Warshak, Teresa Ryland, Sailor Gammons, and Harold Bray. And anniversaries, Bob and Cecily Harmon, and Jay and Ann Matson. If you would stand and we will pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the blessing of life and the wonders of marriage. We ask you to pour out your spirit on these couples and on these individuals with the blessing of your presence, your touch, your hope, and your empowerment to be the image of God in this world around them. We thank you for your protection and guidance through their lives, and we ask for a continued blessing from this day forth forevermore in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, um, John, if you want to start. This is really something special. Um, the, we have this wonderful new baptismal font that um, if you'll notice, is actually designed to match the carvings at the church, which is quite something. Um, and it's having tried to move that one up here for baptisms, it saved a lot of surgery. I'm sure it will, because this thing moves. That one takes at least two men and maybe more just to balance the thing. So, and it is beautifully done. Um, this backstory is really interesting. Melvin, let's see, was it, you know, George and Milka were your parents, and George came to Lake Wales from Yugoslavia in 1919, and he wanted to have a Yugoslavian wife, so he sent back and had a wife sent over, <laughs> and he married Milka in 1921. That, think of that, that's 100 years ago without any children coming from this marriage. Um, Katie is one of, had three brothers, so four children, and they attended 
what was a one-room church. And the altar flowers were picked from, from parishioners' yard, uh, yards, and um, they had Sunday school outside. I mean, it's, it sounds idyllic, but the memories you carry of the first Christmas pageant, you remember that? I understand. I mean, it's amazing. It's so appropriate that, that Katie would give this wonderful gift in honor and memory of her parents um, and the generations, as I mentioned in the sermon, that have come from not just her family, but many families. It's unusual to find a parish where there are so many generations still attending the same parish community. People move around and it's just astonishing that, that we have this wonderful legacy of families who have the history in their, in their own memory of what this church was and has become. So thank you so much, Katie. What I would like to do is, if we can navigate this, um, if the family would join around this way, because I think Steve is going to get a picture for us. Um, yeah, is that going to work? Um, so that we can dedicate. There are a couple of prayers. The, the yellow sheet inside your program is what you'll need. Yeah, Katie, you don't need to move a thing. And if you all want to begin with the presentation we present. We present to you the baptismal font to be set apart for the service of Christ's holy church. All things come from you, O Lord. Prosper the work of your hands, of our hands. Show your servants your work. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that you have put, into, put it into our hearts of, the, of your people to make offerings for your service and have been pleased to accept their gifts. Be with us now and bless us as we set apart this beautiful font to your praise and glory and in the memory of George and Milka through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we remember before you today your faithful servants, George and Milka, and we pray that, having opened to them the gates of larger life, you will receive them more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have faithfully served you in the past, they may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We bless your name, O Lord, because it has pleased you to enable your servant Katie to offer this gift for your worship. Remember her for good and grant that all who benefit from, the gift, from this gift may show their thankfulness to you by using it in accordance with your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Katie. Thank you, Jukitis. What a wonderful, wonderful tribute. Did Steve? Oh, wait, yeah, we want to get one quick picture. Yeah, he, he's going to come and stand around here. Steve, do you think you could come over here because we want Katie? And now, as Tim says, I love this, a word from our sponsor. And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it, for the pagan world runs after all such things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts.
For those of you participating in the service online, we begin on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say... Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.